My mother began with this one story that made my eyes roll through their sockets. It was as if she was there when everything happened. A little smile on my face. Sometimes I would laugh when it became hysterical. And then I would twist my face when it became serious. In the past, she said, there was this family suffering from what Ben Okri referred to in his book, The Famished Road, as a spirit child. That is, a child who died and reincarnated several times, either to the same or different parent. In this particular case, which occurred in a nearby village in my town, the parent believed that the child was a spirit child because the mother had previously lost several children while giving birth. So, this time, they decided to leave a mark on the child and completely punt him. The reason was simple. They wanted to keep the baby from returning. However, if the child returned to the family, they would be aware and would most likely make a sacrifice, as depicted in the book The Famished Road. Now, surprisingly, the next pregnancy that the mother took in and gave birth to, the baby was as dark as Jacob and had all the marks that was being placed on the body of the previous baby. But this time, the child survived and lived a longer life with the family. This is not an excerpt from the book The Famished Road. It happened in my state, but according to my mother. Hello, my name is Uncle Don and you are listening to This Thing in the Mud. I remember my friend telling me at the start of this podcast project that I needed to do a lot of episodes in store in case I didn't have time to record or write my weekly episodes. But I didn't listen. I get coconut head. Nah, not at all. My idea of this thing in the mall had always been something out of spontaneity with a little research to follow. So, I thought every week would be based on events or thought-provoking issues of the time or week. But now, I am wishing that I'd listened to my good friend Mr. Cadillac, which is why this podcast has shifted from Mondays to Tuesdays and now to Wednesdays for the past two weeks. I hope that it doesn't continue like this. My apologies once again. I'd say that the last two weeks has been clouded by travels and family meetings from ABJ to Aquibum and back to Lagos. I had a great time this Easter with family and friends, and I hope that you had a wonderful holiday as well. This week, we are talking about reincarnation. And just like the story you've heard, there are two more to come. At the end of this, it will be nice to hear from you and know what you think about the subject. But first, let's go back to where it all began. It's not every day that you come across stories that make your jaw drop, especially when they come from elderly people. I came to visit my mother, like I said, from ABJ last week, after not seeing her in over a year. And it was a beautiful time to talk about so many things, from family to community and everything in between. Something led to another and we ended up discussing reincarnation. Now, if you do not believe in reincarnation, I recommend that you listen and take it with a grain of salt. But stories are stories and they must be told. My mother asked if I believed in reincarnation and I replied that I did not. For her, it was an opportunity to give me a different account of what she had seen in the past. I was immediately hooked. I mean, who would reject that? To be clear, I do not believe in reincarnation once again, owing to the fact that I have never seen anyone reincarnated. But I'm only interested in it because, according to my mother, they took place a few decades ago, and some of the characters are still alive. Something I'm fairly certain that I'll learn more about in the future. Back in 1970s, my mother told me about a classmate of hers at a very young age who openly told her parents that her father was not a biological father. Now, she went on to describe how she died and what happened before she died in her previous life. She claimed that she was bitten by a snake and died as a result of that. She went on to mention her previous father's name, her previous mother's name, and her village. And all of these names were real. I mean, the people confirmed that their daughter had died at that particular time. 
and it was a big thing. You see, the current parents of the children were shocked, but you can't dispose your child. So everyone just listened to her like a prophetess, and nothing was done. For them, reincarnation was normal, so there was nothing really big of a thing they could do at the time. But so I asked my mother if the lady in question was still alive, and she said to me, yes. I'd say it frightened me a little bit. But because I was eager to learn more, I simply told her that it's a lie. And she was challenged to tell me more. The third story that she told me was about a man from our village who had an extraordinary encounter with the afterlife. Now, it may not be a complete reincarnation story, but it is close. Before she started telling me the story, she asked if I knew this one relative who was a cousin of another relative who was the daughter of the man in question. I simply said no with a nod of my head. Regardless, she persisted. She simply wanted to demonstrate her point. Mr. James, which obviously is not his real name, had been walking in his compound with his wife, pounding palm kernel to make palm oil. Now, he had become tired at some point and informed his wife that he needed to rest. He went inside and snowed on a long bench while taking a nap. After a while, his wife noticed that he was still sleeping. She was concerned because the palm kernel was getting cold and he hadn't finished his walk. So she went in to help him up. When she arrived at Mr. James' sleeping quarters, she noticed that he wasn't breathing and she literally shook him, but he didn't move or wake up. Obviously, there was the alarm. And of course, the wailing. Neighbors and villagers tried to wake him up, but he was gone. But while all of this was going on, they noticed something. They noticed that he was still warm rather than getting cold like a dead body would. So they told the wife to give him a few hours before declaring him dead for good. Everyone was amazed when Mr. James woke up the next day. And then there was a question. Mr. James, what happened to you? Mr. James, in a calm and collective manner, stated that he had gone to testify in a case involving a friend of his who had died a few days earlier. In the afterlife, his friend was asked if he took Holy Communion on a regular basis in church. And he said yes. Now the angels, or whoever was judging him, asked, if he had any proof, and he said that his friend, Mr. James, could provide proof that he was a communicant. So, to demonstrate his point, they asked him to go find Mr. James and bring to the court. That is how Mr. James got involved. When Mr. James arrived at the courthouse, he was asked if he had ever seen his friend take communion in church. And Mr. James said yes, and even went on to tell them that he usually sat next to him in church. Now, I'm not sure if this was truly about his friend, but my mother said that if Mr. James had lied at the time, he would have been done for. Truthfully, this thing sounded like a movie. After the fourth story, I couldn't help but look up reincarnation stories online, and I discovered that a boy in Australia had told everyone that he was Princess Diana, reincarnated. He went on to mention names and location that the press confirmed that were true, even before Princess Diana got married to the prince, her husband. The young man even referred to Prince Harry and his brother as my boys. Can you imagine that? Reincarnation is a tricky subject, but it basically means that at some point in our lives, we all lived in another land or time. Now, Christians and Muslims don't talk about it much, but some people believe it's real. So the question is, do you believe in reincarnation? Or have you met or known someone who has? Have you heard any strange stories about reincarnation? What would happen if you ran into someone who got reincarnated or something? How would you react? And what would you say to that individual? <laughs> like I said in this subject, I'd like you guys to engage and I can't wait to hear what you guys' responses are. While I wait for your feedback, this is what is in the mud. Ciao.
If you enjoyed this episode of This Thing in the Mud, don't forget to subscribe, like and drop us a comment on our YouTube and social media pages. My handle is at uncle underscore don and it is spelled U-N-K-L underscore D-O-N on Instagram and Twitter. See you next week. All my love.